What's up? On our May 26th, I'm here to give you my 20 second QA. If you'd like to send me a QA question, please don't hesitate to do so. Go on my inbox, send me a personal message, personal sports, whatever. Um, actually, for this QA, um, I'm going to be answering the rest of my questions that I have here. This is going to be my video where I, um, you know, test the time limit here a little bit because I've seen Big Rat give me like a 30 minute video or something like that. This is my, my attempt to do it. Um, I appreciate if you would watch the entire thing. Um, if you don't, it's fine. I mean, I don't really. Maybe you can just, it's your decision. But um, I'm answering the rest of my questions here. I have some questions from like August, and I am really sorry that I haven't gotten to them yet. Um, but um, I will be answering every single one that I currently have. I believe there are 13 left that I haven't answered. Um, so I'll put time and effort into everything, definitely. Um, I come home from college on Wednesday, which should be interesting because I haven't been home for more than a couple days since summertime. So, Tyler Black was still in Ring of Honor at that time, uh, but now he's in FCW. Um, but, in any uh, indication, I'm in the common room of my uh, floor in my building, my dormitory, or dorm room, whatever. Um, so, if you see me go glancing off the side, see somebody I, w I know and wave, that's just, you know, I'm not going crazy, that's just me. And there are a lot of cute girls on my floor, too, so you can't forget that. Um, and my final battle hot video will be up. Um, Definitely before I leave for New York, because I'll be at Final Battle First Row Balcony um, on Saturday. So I gotta, I'll gotta, i make it probably Wednesday or Thursday. i got to figure out what uh, I'm going to do with that or what type of video I'm going to make. I haven't figured that out yet. So I definitely want to be home when I make it, or I haven't really decided that. All right, so let's get to this Q&A. Um, first three questions from Pat's Chargers 2009. Uh, first one, why are Japanese wrestlers always being underutilized in the mainstream wrestling? Um... I guess uh, you haven't found the right one. Um, the last notable Japanese wrestler, I mean, or of any, uh, I remember Yokozuna was billed as a Japanese guy because um, he was a Mr. Fuji, but I, I think he's actually the cousin of The Rock, if I'm remembering correctly. I think he's actually Samoan. Um, I might be completely wrong on that, but I, that's how I remember it. Um, so, I mean, there's not hasn't been a true Japanese wrestlers, I mean, in Miss Wrestling Co. has been, you know, really, really, uh, just really, really done well. I mean, in females, you know, you had uh, Akira Hokuto be the only, the, be the first WCW uh, women's champion. So she was dominating there, but, you know, you really haven't had a male. I mean, you have Yoshitatsu currently, who you don't see that often anymore. Um, you had... You had Funaki, and you know how that went. Um, basically, being the most famous jobber since Barry Horowitz. Um, I mean, you had people in the past. I mean, you had you had Jimmy Wang Yang. He turned into a Asian redneck, and that was kind of bad. And you know, he was a Keo as well. Um, I, I always thought he was extremely talented, and you never used him correctly. Uh, and WWE never used him correctly. Um, he should at least he should he definitely should have been, been the guy to be Gregory Helms for that Cruiserweight title back at No Way Out Seven instead of who was it? It was Chavo. Uh, that's why Mexican wrestlers have done pretty well in WWE. Look at Eddie Guerrero. Uh, just the Japanese wrestlers have never really done that well that I can remember. I'm trying to think, I really can't even think of one. If there's one that I can't remember, please put it in the comment section. I mean, I'm not perfect. Um, really can't think of a really dominant Japanese wrestler in mainstream wrestling. I mean, I mean, Japanese mainstream wrestling, I mean, there's it's 99% Japanese wrestlers. So if you want to see real Japanese wrestlers, I mean, and that's why, like, you remember back, I guess it was in 08, late 08, WWE was trying to sign Takeshi Morishima. Maybe that's why he had it in mind. I mean, you look at the track record of all the Japanese wrestlers that have tried, and they've done nothing. So, I mean, but maybe a guy like Morishima could change that, especially now that he's slimmed down. If you've seen his match, I still haven't seen it, but he, uh, apparently his match with Sugera at the Joe Gucci Memorial Show is he looks the best he's looked in years, so I can't wait to see that. All right, second question from Badge Chargers 2009. Which match would be the best out of these two, Young Bucks versus the House of Truth or um, the Motor Street Machine Guns versus Mike Quackenbush and Jigsaw? Um, I'm going to say um, definitely. Motor City Machine Guns versus Mike Quackenbush and Jigsaw. Um, you know, I've seen... I've, I, Mike Quackenbush and Jigsaw really haven't had... I mean, faced a lot of the good teams on the indies outside of, you know... I mean, they've had a match with the Young Bucks. Um, they have... 
Have they faced the House of Truth? I believe they did uh, Young Lions Cup Night 2. I don't want to be quoted there, but possibly that day. Um, you know, they, they haven't faced the Briscoes. I mean, they've also faced all the Dragon Gate teams because they're on Dragon Gate USA. Uh, but they haven't really gone against the notable, uh, the notable I guess, like ROH teams. Uh, and, I mean, they have faced Steen and Generico back in... Uh, Back at Domination in 07 in ROH, but like in current years they haven't done it since you know Char Chikara's talent stopped working for Ring of Honor back. I mean the last notable Chikara talent that came to Ring of Honor I believe was Michael Hackenbush at the seventh anniversary show in 2009. Um, but but since then there really hasn't been any. So I mean they haven't faced the Briscoes, they haven't faced any of them, and I would really really like to see it because Michael Hackenbush is one of the most underrated wrestlers, maybe ever. Uh, currently today definitely. Um, and Jigsaw is is is. Very good as well. I wouldn't call him great, but I call him very good. But and I, I've seen Young Bucks House of Truth a couple times in in Ring of Honor, so you know, I'm sure it, it, they put on good matches. But you know, Mercy Machine Gun my, my, versus Mike Quack versus Jigsaw could be something very special. A final question from Pat's Chargers 2009. What are your thoughts on the G1 climax this year in uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling? Um, it was good. I mean, I didn't watch that much of it. I just watched the matches that Daniel Talks Pro Rest did recommend. Along with a couple others that I really wanted to watch, like Rookie Goto kind of went on a tear during that, and he put on some sev put several great matches on, or, or several good match, good great matches on. But the mas best match of the entire tournament was the final, Kojima versus Tanahashi. Um, brutal, brutal end of that end of that match. Um, I didn't like that match actually as much as m most people did, but it was still my favorite one of the tournament. Um, it set Kojima up to take on Makabe, great. Even though I think Goto should have been the one to win that match, but. Different story. Um, or Goto should have, won, should have been the one to win that tournament. I don't know why they aren't pushing him like they should have. I've, he's my, I know he's my favorite, but I mean, it's getting to the, like, you know, why haven't you pushed this guy? It's like getting, I guess, Samoa Joe and TNA. I mean, just give him the belt. You're, bush, you're beating him on the bush too much. Like, that, that's what I'm comparing it to now. You know, he, Joe should have had the belt in TNA back in 06, if not early 07, off that feud with Kurt Angle. He had, he had to wait until lockdown 08. It's getting like that with Goto. I just don't want to see that happen. But overall, the Joe Climax was pretty good this year. Um, I've seen better ones, though. Uh, question from Man of Fire 310, and on Fire 310, sorry. If one wrestling promotion were to step up and compete with the WWE, what do you think it would, that promotion would be? Uh, make sure I read your question right, sorry. I'm really sorry. If one wrestling promotion were to step up and compete with the WWE, what do you think that promotion would be? I read it quickly. Um... It can't be TNA, unless they totally redo TNA. I mean, it's too much of a copy version of the WWE. Ring of Honor does have a TV deal now. Um, it, would be, it would have to be that or Chikara. Unless um, a Japanese promotion, kind of like a bigger deal, but with Dragon Gate USA. But it would have to be NOAA. Or actually, it would have to be New Japan. They come over and run shows frequently. And just take basically the best talent... From TNA, ROH, Chikara, from everywhere that isn't signed with WWE, and combine it into one promotion. They could take Lucha Town too, and kind of create the anti-factor of WWE. I guess WWE versus everyone else. They could do that, but if you just want one single promotion that isn't, I, I guess you'd have to say Ring of Honor, um, because it's enough different where WWE fans can uh, go to it pretty easily. Um, Chikara is a little bit too different. Um, for, for for casual WWE fans, I mean, I, I personally love Chikara, but I, I just think that some fans might have a little bit of a hard time adjusting to it. Um, in recent years, it's gotten a lot better with that, but, you know, I still think it would take a little bit of adjusting to do, so I would say Ring of Honor here. Um, even though I think Chikara could definitely, it would be very, very interesting. I think it might even be a little more interesting if Chikara did it because they are a smaller person than Ring of Honor is now, but I think Ring of Honor more realistically could do it. All right, question from Betts. Bleeds Green One. Which promotion, U.S., Mexico, or Japan, do you think is putting on the best shows this year? <sighs> not PWG, not Evolve, not Dragon USA, definitely not WWE or TNA. So from the U.S., it has to be Ring of Honor. I mean, Chikara's best show was Chikara Source Rex, in my opinion, and that was an 8.5. Ring of Honor put it on five or six shows better than that, not seven or eight. Um, Mexico, I haven't watched much Lucia this year, to be completely honest. Um, I watched some CMLL and some AAA here and there, but nothing too noteworthy. 
Um, and then Japan, the only company I've, uh, I've watched a lot of NOAA this year, they've had kind of a down year. I mean, uh, their numbers are a little bit down this year, if anything. Um, New Japan, I, I just got to say ROH here. Um, you know, just they've put on consistent shows back to back to back to back. I mean, their worst show this year, let me go through my head, all right. It's probably Gold Rush. I give that a 6.75. That's almost good. That's a very, very good thing. I mean, they did have other shows like Buffalo Stamp. I never did see Buffalo Stampede, too. I, I, probably that probably is worse. Uh, but, you know, I've seen Civil Warfare. That's better. You know, Allied Forces. Uh, I'll probably pick up in New York, which is, I heard from, uh, I've seen Trademark and Big Red both do reviews, which they get better scores than 6.75s. Um, yeah, so i got to say... Um, or wait here. All right. First of two questions from Vardimus. What match would you like to see uh, for the next Epic Encounter if they do one? Uh, this is ROH shows they've done three Epic Encounters. The first one was um, it was Danielson in London. Uh, second one was Danielson and McGinnis. Uh, third one was Davy Richards, Kenny Omega. The, fir the purpose of the first one and the third one was to uh, build um, and, and kind of Springboard uh, have two future ROH main eventers springboard and have a great match against each other to springboard them to the main event. Um, so I think the perfect guy to put one in here would be Eddie, would be Eddie Edwards. Um, I wouldn't put him, mind putting him in there against Kenny Omega, um, but you know he kind of is in Japan a lot, so he's kind of seen more of a special attraction nowadays. So I'd put Eddie Edwards. I yeah, I wouldn't mind him seeing. Face his former partner Davey Richardson one or like Chris Hero. Um, even though I kind of just see him as a main event in Ring of Honor right now. now um, so Eddie Edwards would be my choice definitely for one spot. Um, maybe Kyle O'Reilly. Eddie Edwards, Kyle O'Reilly would probably be my choice. Or Eddie Edwards, Kenny King. Those would probably be my two choices. Uh, I don't see them doing one for a little while longer, like 2012. All right, and second question, do you see ROH using any more Japanese talent in the future? Technically, um, well, I was going to say technically Kenny Omega is a Japanese talent, it's primarily in Japan, but he's not of Jap he's of Canadian descent, not Japanese. Um, I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, I think it's because they want to save a little bit of money. Uh, I don't think Pierce was too high on a lot of the Japanese talent, bringing them in consistently outside of Kenta. So I don't know why they haven't brought Kenta back um, yet. Um, I think they maybe wanted to wait because of all the injuries to the mate, to Mara Fuji and Kenta, and you know, they, maybe they wanted to wait. They're waiting for something special like Atlanta or something, just to bring them back. Um, I, I think that would be great if because you make it truly, truly special if you bring them in like once or twice a year, especially because they are special attractions. Um, like you bring in a quartet of them, you bring in Morishima, Sugera, Mara Fuji, and Kenta for Atlanta. I think it'd be amazing, especially because I'm going to Atlanta. I'd really like to see that. But, um, you know, if they did that, I think it would be awesome. Um, but I, I do see it happening a lot. Um, should it? Um, for, but, but the only reason I think they haven't been brought back yet is for monetary reasons. Um, you know, they haven't spent their money elsewhere. Like, they brought in Charlie Haas, Shelton Benjamin. They bring it back Kenny Omega. Um, I think they're just trying to save a little bit of money here. Uh, and they might go a little bit more in-depth with that next year. But only time will tell. All right, for, first of two questions from uh, Mega Dark Angel 13. Can you list the following from best to worst? Okay, I will. Shawn Michaels, Mitsuharu Misawa, Toshiaki Kawada, Luthez, Krangle, Chris Jericho, Kenta Kobashi, Daniel Bryan. All right, um, I'm guessing you mean overall as a wrestler. So I'm just going to do that. First would have to be. I'd be hard pressed not to say Mitsuharu Masawa here. Um, you know, she's the only wrestler by watching his matches that's changed my view completely on wrestling. Um, you know, he's just he makes four and a half star matches look look effortless, and then five star matches, you know, he he just has on the regular. You know, even though Kobashi had more throughout his career, I think Masawa's were more meaningful. Um, you know, look at his one versus Saruta. Look at Kawada. I mean. Even even the best match of his career, in my opinion, and probably my favorite pro wrestling match of all time, him versus Kobashi in uh, October of 1998. Um, just, just that match is just 
unbelievable. And, you know, that match, if you've never seen that match, you are missing something that will change your mind about wrestling forever. I mean, just that match is just out of this world, insane. Five stars did not do it anywhere enough justice. I'd give it six if I could. But that's just why I think Mitsubo Armistar was number one there. Um, Shawn Michaels would have to be number two then. Um, I know, I mean, because as an American fan, you know, you get to see him use Mike's skills, so I think that kind of elevates him a little bit over Kenta Kobashi being third. Um, and Shawn Michaels is the, I, I guess would have to be the American version of Mitsuharu Misawa. Just during the 90s, he went on such a tear. Um, he's one of my two favorite American wrestlers of all time, with Ric Flair being the other. Um, you know, and Rob Van Dam kind of being the third there. Um, just, I love Shawn Michaels. I, I've never seen him live. I really want to. Um, underprivileged at that, but um, hoping he's going to be in Atlanta somehow. Um, third, Kenta Kobashi. He has had the most five-star matches according to Dave Meltzer than anybody else. Um, fourth, I mean, I mean, those three are kind of the top tier, Kobashi, Misawa, and Michaels. I mean, those are legends among legends. You know, those are, if you rank the top, the short list of the top ten professional wrestlers of all time, those three might be in the top five. You know, the they're that good. Um, fourth, because of his p- potential future, I'm going to say Kurt Angle. I mean, he, he it might be a little bit of a stretch, but he could go down as one of the best American wrestlers of all time, American-born wrestlers of all time. I mean, he definitely has had the match quality for it. He definitely will have the match quality for it. He looks like he's not slowing down at all. He's just in a promotion right now where he really can't show that. So if he, he jumps back to WWE, especially if he's had a match against Daniel Bryan, you know, that'll submit his legacy that he's always had it and that it was TNA that was his problem. Fifth, I'd put Toshiaki Kawada. Um, I mean, he's had probably more star five, five star matches than Angle. But at the same time, Kawada, you know, couldn't, uh, I mean, he, he, he's an amazing wrestler, a, a hall of first ballot Hall of Famer. But, you know, he just didn't impress me like Misawa and Kobashi did, even though that's not really fair because Misawa and Kobashi impressed me like none other. And Kawada impressed me greatly, but not as much as those two. That leaves Luthez, Chris Jericho, and Daniel Bryan. When you know Daniel Bryan and Chris Jericho are on any list as two for the bottom of three, you know it's a great list. Um, six, I put Chris Jericho for the reason being that um, I'd love to see uh, you know what he can do in the future. I know he's retired right now, but he's been putting in work for... You know, he's traveled all over the world. He's been a wrestler since, I want to say the late 80s, early 90s. I know it's at least since the early 90s. And he was in the 94 and 95 J-Cups in for New Japan. So, great stuff there. Sixth, seventh would have to be Daniel Bryan um, over Luthez. I mean, just his, his potential is out of this world amazing. You know, it, it, it really is. A lot of people do call him the best in the world, formerly Bryan Danielson. i got to agree with him. You know, right now he is one of the best wrestlers in the world if not the best wrestler in the world. But i got to put Davey Richards over him right now. Uh, so probably the second best wrestler in the world, Brian Danielson. Daniel Bryan. And then Abe Luthez, um, had a very early career. He's trained a lot of good guys. I mean, Luthez, I, I believe, had a part in the training of Nigel McGuinness, and you see how good that is. So Luthez last, unfortunately. I'm sorry. All right, second from Mega Dark Angel 13. Which match would be better, Kenta Kobashi versus Kurt Angle or Mitsuharu Masawa versus Shawn Michaels? This would be two different matches. I mean, Kobashi and Angle would be a little bit more of a mat, mat, mat-based match with a lot of more st- uh, striking and fighting spirit coming out in the end with Misawa and Michaels just kind of being an all-around type match with a lot of elements in it because Misawa... Uh, but it's more of which two... I mean, these are four kind of different wrestlers at the same time. Um, it, it'd be a matter of which uh, wrestler's styles would clash a little bit better. Um... You know, Masao versus Michaels is one of my biggest dream matches of all time, all the time, of, of, of all the times. Like, Santino Morello, woohoo. Um, but Kobashi and Angle, I think, would just work over Masao and Michaels for whatever reason, now that I'm just thinking about it. I just think that that match would be insane and just out of this world for reasons beyond me. So I'm going to say Kobashi versus Angle. Um, slightly. All right. Um, let's scroll down here. Um, four more questions, let's go. 
Uh, f first question from Death I Roth 8046. How how do you think the title match should have been booked for Glory Bound or Nine and its effects on the long run? Um, I would have had thrown Daniels in that main event, uh, made it a triple threat match. I know that when Austin Aries won the title, it was a triple threat match um, as well. But you know, I wouldn't have had it be an elimination match. I would have had it be one fall, maybe, maybe the exact same end sequence um, with Tyler uh, with Roddy sick kicking. Tyler to win the belt, and in the aftermath with Daniels just going to the back. But, you know, we, we had seen Tyler and uh, Roddy face six or seven times since, you know, um, whatchamacallit, or five or six times since, um, whatchamacallit, um, Survival of the Fitch 2009, where they were the finalists. So, you know, I really didn't think they could pull out anything too special that they hadn't done before. I mean, I mean, I knew it would be great, but you know, I, I really didn't think it'd be anything too special. Like, I thought the, the match that they could have had happened at Supercard of Honor Five. So, you know, uh, I would have definitely thrown Daniels in the main event. Would have made it a little bit better. Still, would have had Roddy win. Uh, you can't have Tyler hold the belt going to the WWE, and I didn't think Daniels was definitely the right guy to beat him. Uh, so, I'm gonna say that. Um, in the long run, I, w I'm, I mean, I would book Davey to beat him on Saturday. So, and then Davey Richards just goes on a tear. But I'll get into that in my final battle video. All right. Um, another question from Mega Dark Angel 13. Uh, who do you see as the biggest feature for WWE? Alberto Del Rio, The Miz, Daniel Bryan, or Wade Barrett? Um, Miz is current champion. I really do like it. But as a future, probably not. Um... Barrett, probably not. I mean, I just don't, I don't, I'm going to have to, it's going to be between Del Rio and Brian. I'm going to say by a slight hair, Daniel Bryan. Uh, because I just, I just, he's one of the best wrestlers in the world. I totally believe in him. Uh, and, you know, I mean, Del Rio is different, and he's a great kind of different. But Brian is, just has so much momentum right now, and it, his future looks incredibly bright. And the final two questions from Spidey Senses 67. What are your thoughts on Chris Hero? Do you see him as a future ROXL champion? And do you think he would be a, be a good fit for WWE? Um, my, my general thoughts on Chris Hero is that he's an all-around great wrestler. Um, on the, I mean, if you rank just as an overall package, as a uh, pro wrestler, he'd be top three probably on the indies right now with Richards. And that might be it beating him. Um, I mean, his mic skills are awesome. I mean, he, see, because some of the best promos in wrestling. Um, I mean, the, if you've seen the video, wider Davey just cut maybe promo of the year. Um, but Hero can Hero, in my opinion, uh, cut one of the best promos last year after he lost the PBG World Title. Um, so my general thoughts is he, he's amazing in ring and can put on great matches. Can put on great matches with any a lot of people. Um, but at the same time. Um, he is a part of the Kings of Wrestling right now, so I, I definitely want to see what he can do with that. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see if this girl's coming in here. She's not. Okay, good. Let's continue this video. Um, do you see him as a future world champion for WWE? Uh, oh, sorry, messed that up. Do you see him as a future world ROH world champion? Do you think he would be a good fit for WWE? Um, I can see him as a future ROH world champion. You know, a lot of people uh, wanted to know whether he could do that uh, later. Uh, as in his career, maybe after the Kings Wrestling break up again, I can definitely see that happening. Um, he's definitely good enough. Um, and uh, in the future, I can definitely see both of the Kings of Wrestling going to the WWE. Um, he definitely deserves to be, I mean, WWE sums a lot of wrestlers that are nowhere as good as he is. So I definitely think Chris Hero would be a good fit for the WWE. And then final question from Spidey Senses 67. Which of these matches would you rather see? Daniel Bryan versus Kurt Angle or Brian Danielson versus Chris Benoit? And out of those three, who do you think is the best wrestler? Not, who, is, who is the best wrestler? Not just in terms of technical ability. Um, Got to be Danielson versus Angle here. Um, you know, Brian Danielson and Chris Benoit. Uh, as awesome as that would be, I mean, Danielson and Angle pretty much wrestle the same style. So you know, that, that would be, be just copycat of each other, and that would be just completely out of this world amazing. If they ever had a match, um, and it could happen, you know, it it, it, it could happen, but um, we'll see. Um, and out of those three, I gotta say, Kurt Angle is the uh, best wrestler. You know, he does have the mic skills to back it up. Um, he doesn't, and he has the career legacy to back it up. 
You know, Kurt Angle is just is could go down as one of the best American, greatest American wrestlers of all time. You know, I'm not saying Brian Danielson couldn't, um, and Chris Benoit really can for obvious reasons. But just Kurt Angle just has the best chance of any of those definitely of those three right now. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, if you still are, I know this is about 25 minutes long. Um, I'll be home on uh, Wednesday, and then I'm going to be in Final Battle on Saturday. I can't wait. All right, thanks for watching. All right, I'll see you guys later.